I love your Dada poems. <laughs> His process of restless reinvention, the great achievement of humankind, solidified into three dimensions, boldly expressive color, thrill of radical experimentation, constructing a new kind of life as a cat meows transcend everyday life. I told Kendra here <laughs> that I especially enjoyed that her slips of paper are tumbled onto a grid, the grid, the system of rational orderly measurements. That's an amusing backdrop for a Dada poem that's about randomness and disorder and the irrational. So I was wondering if, if all of you felt equally like these poems are fascinating, and it sounds like you did, um, based on comments such as Franco saying, it's really funny that just random phrases stuck together can sound so profound. I agree, Franco. Um, and I also loved that Franco responded to Logan's poem by saying, if you told me this was written by an actual poet, I would believe you. Indeed, right? There is something incredibly fresh about these disjunctions. I mean, poetry is supposed to be about making language fresh and making perception fresh. And the Dadaists are very disruptive and they break logic in a way that makes perception absolutely shockingly fresh. Fresh like being dunked into an icy cold lake. And Franco's poem does that. Eroticism based in form and materials suspended on the wall. They seem to defy gravity, solids and voids. Killing fields haunted by intrusive memories of terror. Cheap wood nailed together at intersecting planes. Even the burlap stitchery <laughs> behind the torn pieces of paper seems to kind of wake up your eyes and mind conceptually and perceptually. I wanted you to get to make a Dada artwork, your Dada poem, because I know Dada raises so many questions and I want to address some of them. I wish I had time to address all of them, but this video would probably be about three hours long and then you wouldn't watch it. So Jasmine here is saying, honestly, I'm a little confused. <laughs> Yay for honesty and, and honest about confusion because Confusion is the closest thing to the truth here. <laughs> is it anything and everything? That's a great way to put it, right? It does seem like it becomes anything and everything. I understand that the whole point of it was to go against the ideals and rules of art and push the boundaries, but is, not, is that not the same as Picasso's Cubism movement? In this case, could we classify Cubism under Dadaism? Very insightful query here, Jasmine. Let me see if I can uh, kind of investigate this a little bit. If we look at Picasso's portrait of Daniel Henry Kahnweiler, which the textbook presents to see Picasso's cubism, very much it's breaking the rules of art, as Jasmine says. It's breaking the rules of how an artist is expected to organize a figure in illusionistic pictorial space using a framework of lines and modeling shading from dark to light to create the illusion of a, a solid form in space. Because here solids and space keep merging in confusing ways. The spatial architecture of pictorial illusionism is being chopped up. So this is breaking the rules of art, but I would say it's not Dadaism here because it's still within the bounds of thinking about the act of picturing and the idea that the artwork is contained within the frame to be a little autonomous world of its own. Dada breaks the idea that an artwork is a contained, coherent world of its own. So for instance, our mutt, 1917 Duchamp, Fountain. This is no self-contained work that an artist has created to making formal choices for an expressive purpose. This is just a urinal. This is a mass-produced object that's been 
plucked out of ordinary life, out of the, the bathroom, and stuck in an incongruous environment. So that's not an artwork as Picasso knew art when he was doing Conviler. Because this doesn't just break the rules about how a painting is supposed to be constructed. It breaks the category of art itself. The, the reasonable response in 1917 is, that's not art. That's a urinal. What's it doing here? So what Dada does is it creates non-art. It works with non-art materials and rides a line where art is sort of decaying into non-art. Interestingly, Picasso came closest to being like a Dadaist in, his, in, in terms of using non-art materials and seeming to break down the boundaries between art and ordinary stuff when he was working in a synthetic cubist mode making collage. Remember Hannah Hock, the Dada photo montager, is a master of cutting, snipping, combining stuff from mass culture imagery. Well, he did that with his newspapers, his label from an aperitif, his wallpaper. So, da so Picasso himself was not a Dadaist, but he was certainly tremendously open and experimental. And he, I would say, he sort of prefigures or almost starts, moves toward Dadaism in the synthetic cubism, but he never fully affiliates with Dadaism because he remains very much a painter who's deeply trained in making paintings that involve forms on a surface. Picasso mostly kept making paintings using paint, <laughs> but Dada Dadaists rejected the, the concept of art, the procedures of art, and the materials of art. So when Hugo Ball is reciting his poem, Caroline, with his lobster hands, he is not doing art in any way that art has ever been done before. He's actually busting out of the category of art itself. This leads to a very important question. Oops, I lost it. Hold on, let me... There it is. A question that Dustin asked, which was, how much influence does the avant-garde period have over today's works of art? As Isabel responded, she said significant. I'd go even farther and say huge, immense, immeasurable. Certainly that is true of Dada. Go to SF MoMA's website and see what's opening on May 8th. It's an exhibition in which you see the artist and TVs and wires spread around. Clearly, this is a descendant of Hugo Ball. The idea that art can be anything and everything because the category of art no longer has firm boundaries and we don't even know what our art materials or non-art materials and how they might be reimagined. Look at this Olafur Eliasson installation. Installation art is extremely important in contemporary art. Is it sculpture? Mm, yes, yeah, sort of. It's three-dimensional, but it's not Traditionally, sculpture is a contained thing. This is an entire environment that you inhabit and experience. The light comes through it and changes it. This is related to Dada, to Kurt Schwitters and his Merzbau. We're looking at a photo of Kurt Schwitters' Merzbau. What's his Merzbau? Merz is the last syllable of commerce and bau, building as in the Bauhaus that you're going to be studying about, the building house. He took his his house, his family's home in Hanover, and he basically took junk and built it into a bizarre Dadaist anti-cathedral with colliding stuff, making little caverns and compartments of chaos, confusion, and irrationality, like the mind of a Dadaist physicalized in the room itself. Let's Google Wengachi Mutu to see that here she's an artist, age 48 now, Kenyan-American artist, but she's very much informed in her work 
by Hannah Huch. Because look what she's doing with photo montage. Oops, wait, stop that. I want them to look at the pic at the images. In terms of using photos, stop that. In a way that highlights how women are objectified in ways that make them sort of grotesque, horrifying aliens in the in a culture that kind of treats women as figures of of lust but also of disdain so kobe too was mentioning this this data is feature of generating new perceptions and new concepts out of non-art materials out of materials and procedures that had never been thought to be belong in the art world and for Kurt Schwitters, Kobe's showing the paper collage Merz 19. This is literally the, the torn scraps of commerce, tickets and bus tokens, bits of newspapers, collage. And I really appreciated Mia Schneider's point in response to that, mentioning that, oh, where is it? Mentioning that this has continued with the idea of works that challenge our mindset and value, such a good word. Challenge how we think, challenge what we think art is supposed to even be or why we're supposed to care about art. And she brings up this very famous work, which you can see on YouTube, which is John Cage performing in the 1960s, a piece, at the, a piano piece. His piano piece, four minutes, 33 seconds, consists of him simply sitting in front of the piano the in silence. is sound and silence. Integrating these is composing. I have nothing to say, and I am saying it. 